All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first webinar. Perhaps we'll do more this week. If you all need them, we'll do them on the Christmas time Arctic outbreak for the Rio Grande Valley um, as of 2 p.m. this Tuesday, December 20th, 2022. So what are we looking at here? A very strong cold front is coming in, um, dropping temperatures sharply from the afternoon of Thursday, the 22nd, to the afternoon to the morning or daybreak of the 23rd. This is going to be a little different than some of the fronts we've seen even in recent years where we're going to have a very sharp temperature drop. 70s during the afternoon of the 22nd and wake up temperatures will be below freezing everywhere with the actual feels like temperatures as low as 10 degrees on the 23rd. So you can see at the right here the graphic showing the apparent temperature at 2 p.m. on Thursday and the apparent temperature between 7 and 9 a.m. on Friday morning. So uh, really, really cold conditions coming in uh, to the Rio Grande Valley and all of the deep south Texas and all of Texas for that matter with this Arctic outbreak. So by the numbers, sharp change is the big story here to start. A 60 to 65 degree drop in apparent temperatures between the afternoon of Thursday and the morning of Friday. That's an 18 hour time frame. We don't see that very often. Not only is the number high, but the time is short. So we really have to have people on guard and prepared ahead of this event because it comes very, very fast overnight Thursday. So we have hard freezes expected. Temperatures below 28 for most areas for at least a few hours, mainly from 6 to 9 a.m. on the 23rd. And then staying below 32 until noon in most areas, this will be a very slow rise during the morning of the 23rd. Then we'll drop them again on the 24th, down below 28 degrees for most areas, this time for six to nine hours. Again, the favorite areas of the lowest temperatures will be the ranch lands and the brush country to the Rio Grande Plains and King Ranch, but also we can't let our guard down in places like the mid and upper valley where it will be clearer longer. So a long period there on the 23rd, uh, 24th compared to the 23rd. So that's Saturday, Christmas Eve day. Wind is going to be a factor as well. We're expecting winds to really crank up behind this front to 25 to 35 miles per hour with a few gusts of 50 miles per hour soon after sunset Thursday. And it will continue for several hours uh, everywhere, especially the lower mid valley and then all night toward the coast. Over the Gulf, a gale force sustained wind 40 miles per hour with gusts between 50 and 55 miles per hour Thursday evening to Friday afternoon. So what are our impacts from all this? The, from the cold and freeze and the sharpness of the cold and freeze, hypothermia to people without adequate protection and heat. We're really concerned about the sharp change in this event. In other words, if people are not ready by sunset Thursday, they may be in deep trouble by 3 a.m. Friday morning. So uh, the hypothermia threat's real, and if people aren't prepared or have a way to get to a heated area, uh, it really does increase the threat uh, for death. Livestock and pets will also, could also be killed if not provided relatively warm locations, again, given this rapid change in both the actual or ambient temperature and the wind chill. Cold sensitive crops, including citrus on the vine, are at very high risk due to the combination of low temperature and very low humidity. That's one of the differences with this event compared to prior events. The humidity is going to crash as well. We're talking what's called dew point temperatures, perhaps below zero and single digits for sure in most of the growing areas. So that creates an effective temperature, also known as the wet bulb, in the mid to upper teens from pre-dawn Friday through late morning Christmas Eve. And with the winds going at the same time, it's going to be very, very hard to protect the fruit and berries and other things that may be growing on the vine that are wintertime uh, harvests. And then for the Gulf and the uh, Laguna Madre, the bay water and the seawater were plunged two or below 50 degrees between midday and sunset Friday. This will put thousands of sea turtles at risk along the lower Texas coast and tens of thousands at risk along the entire Texas coast from cold stunning. This will require a mass rescue. The last time we had a mass rescue of sea turtles was the URI event in February 2021. This will be that and even more because of the extent of the cold air across the entire coast and the actual cold temperatures and the seawater that's going to drop very, very quickly. 
And then finally, exposed pipes, especially those with water in them, could burst due to the combination of cold and dry. And again, what I mean by that is if the actual temperature is 28, but the effective temperature is 18, that means water will try to evaporate quickly. And as it does, it will cool the air around it and cool the water around it and create ice rapidly. And if that ice expands inside the pipe, it could cause pipe damage. So really need to get the water out of pipes that are exposed as soon as possible, especially during the day on Thursday to be ready for what's coming Thursday night and Friday morning. As far as wind, the gusts above 35 miles per hour may blow lightweight objects around, including inflatables. We expect those gusts just about everywhere in the Rio Grande Valley for a three to five hour window after the front passes early in the evening to mid evening Thursday. And then things will start to quiet down a little bit as you get farther west, meaning I-69C, Hidalgo Brooks County out to the west. It's still gonna be breezy. It's still gonna be nasty cold out there, but it won't be as strong as farther east especially along and east of I-69E in Cameron and Willisie County. Frequent gusts of 40 miles per hour will cause additional damage to poorly fastened roofs, poorly anchored objects. Again, this is really going to be the focus for I-69E, meaning Cameron and Willisie County to the coast. So Brownsville, Harlingen, and Raymondville, and then eastward to Port Isabel, Port Mansfield, South Padre. Those are where we're really concerned about the wind. And the combination of the cold temperatures and the strong winds it will lead to scattered power outages, maybe numerous power outages in some areas beginning Thursday late evening and continuing through Christmas morning. Once again, that greatest threat is along and east of I-69E, especially in Cameron and Willisie County. So here's your timeline for impact. Thursday afternoon, fair and mild, wrap up those preparations while the weather's good. Thursday evening, the cold front surges through the northern counties, meaning uh, Brooks, Jim Hogg, uh, Zapata and Kennedy, and then overnight, meaning as early as eight or nine o'clock and continuing through midnight beyond, that front slams the valley, temperatures crash, gusty north winds, and we'll start seeing those power outages from the combination of cold and wind. And by Friday morning, we bottom everything out, dangerous wind chill between 10 and 20 degrees Fahrenheit, <clears throat> and hypothermia and unprotected crop freeze, as long as power outages expected to peak on Friday morning. Friday afternoon, we'll have a mix of clouds and sun. Uh, the lo lower valley will be cloudy, we think, but the mid and upper valley should be partly cloudy with uh, sun getting through. And that'll help warm temperatures a bit, uh, probably above freezing in most areas, and even near 40 as you get farther west with the sunshine. And we think the power outages will start to improve then. But Friday night, another frigid night with sub-freezing temperatures everywhere. We have to watch for additional hypothermia and the crop damage will continue as the repeated cold air is a real death blow to unprotected crops and plants. So here are the numbers again. This was on the first slide. So they're again reminding you of the 60 to 65 degree feels like temperature drop in just 18 hours. This is as sharp as it gets, folks. I haven't seen one this sharp since I've been here. There's been a number of ones where we've seen 40 to 50, 50 to 60 degree drop over a 24 hour period, not just an 18 hour period. So this one means business. And there's your coldest feels like temperature on both uh, December 23rd and Christmas Eve day. And each morning will be about the same. We're talking 10 to 20 in a broad brush across the entire region from the um, brush country in Rio Grande Plains all the way down to the lower valley. There will be some cold feels like temperatures near the coast where the winds will be stronger longer. And here you can see the feels like temperature only rising into the mid to upper 20s Friday afternoon, despite having some sun, again, except near the coast and lower valley. And then only 30 to 35 Saturday afternoon, uh, we'll still have a 10 to 15 mile per hour wind going out there, even on Saturday on Christmas Eve day. So it's going to feel pretty chilly for multiple days in a row. Here's our concern, though, in addition to the people, plants, pets and pipes. We're looking at the hard freeze on the crops as well. So <clears throat> this is the crop growing area that we're most concerned with in terms of our billion dollar agriculture industry, not including livestock as much here, but more things like your winter crop and your citrus in the red area. So you can see the probabilities of hard freezes are pretty high right now between basically 50 and 80% on Friday morning, 59 and 75 to 80% on Saturday morning, and still for Christmas morning, between 60 and 70%. So what does that mean? 
the effective temperature, the wet bulb will be in the teens because you're combining the temperature with the low humidity. And that's in all of these areas, certainly on the 23rd and 24th, and maybe even on Christmas morning as well. So what's your time frame of that very low effective temperature? 4 a.m. to noon on Friday, midnight to 9 a.m. on Saturday. And again, this will heavily damage exposed and unprotected sensitive crops and plants. We might want to consider this a killing freeze. Now, will everyone have the same amount of impact? No. There's a potential that down in the lower valley, Bayview, uh, north of Los Fresnos, Lozano, those areas may not see quite the degree of effective temperature value in the teens. They may be in the 20s, and that could allow some plants that are protected to survive in some crops. But as you get out into the citrus zone here, western Cameron, southern, Hidalgo, uh, southern Willacy, and southern Hidalgo, while those probabilities are about the same, the potential for lower effective temperature is higher. And so we're really concerned about those areas for significant damage. Um, the highest hard freeze chances, though, a 9 in 10 chance are across ranch country. So this is where we're worried about livestock issues. So effective temperature in the low to mid-teens during the same time frames above, whereas in the valley we're looking at mid-teens to lower 20s from west to east. And again, this could be deadly to unprotected livestock and will freeze cure the rangeland grass and brush. And that will become a fire weather issue as we move later into winter and spring. And we've mentioned this in our long lead outlooks back in uh, early, uh, as early as late October, we were talking about the potential for fire weather concerns by February. This event will do it, but not right away. At least we'll have some time. <clears throat> so minimum temperature forecast, these are the actual values without the wind uh, and not concerning ourselves with the effective temperature based on the humidity. So again, most likely hard freezes across the Rio Grande Plains and the brush country each day. In fact, we have a hard freeze watch in effect now for Friday morning. And again, this will continue into Saturday morning and maybe even into Christmas morning as well. But we are expecting freezes everywhere, meaning temperatures 28 to 32. Uh, but there is a potential, as mentioned before, for a hard freeze even in the valley uh, Friday and, and especially Saturday morning. So um, the, the freeze watch could be changed into a hard freeze uh, watch or hard freeze warning in time, depending on if we trend those temperatures down to the reasonable worst case scenario. So your maximum temperature forecast is going to be cold, folks. We're still forecasting only 35 to 40. As I mentioned before, 40 out west where there's more sunshine, but closer to the coast, it's going to be in the 30s where there'll be more cloud cover on Friday. And even on Christmas Eve day, we're going to struggle to get out of the 30s with the increasing cloud cover kind of moving in from east to west. And finally, by Christmas Day, we warm it up, relatively speaking. Uh, we warm it up into the upper 40s. But I will say these temperatures by day are 35 below average on both uh, December 23rd and Christmas Eve day and are still about 20 to 23 degrees below average on Christmas Day. So like the pictures show, what you see in all those commercials and movies and advertisements and um, even in people's uh, front yards with all the uh, decoratives and the um, ornamentals, uh, it's going to look like that. It's actually going to feel like that. So you won't be wearing shorts and t-shirts anytime soon. You're going to need multiple layers to be safe from the cold. We don't want to forget about our boaters, fishers, and especially our shippers. Um, this is a really bad gale event. In fact, we're forecasting wind speeds around the edge of storm force. Storm force winds are roughly 55 miles per hour and higher. We're going to be right on the edge there from late Thursday night through midday Friday. And with those strong winds, we're going to really crank up the wave heights up to nearly 20 feet in some places offshore and even 10 to 15 feet near shore. So if you're a small craft operator, cancel that boating trip, that fishing trip starting uh, after Thursday and not Friday, not Saturday, not even Sunday will be uh, really worthy of going out there. Probably by Monday, it'll start getting better after Christmas. Here's the Beaufort scale uh, uh, sea state. This is sea state scale eight. This is how it's going to look in the open water. So if you are no, uh, you know, the Coast Guard or know of boaters and shippers coming into the port of Brownsville, and we know they do that all the time, uh, this is a time they may have to divert or hold back to not come in for a good 24 hours there from Thursday evening all the way through Friday evening, as these conditions are going to be really, really nasty. So military vessels as well, really plan out those arrivals and departures to avoid the worst of it. Uh, because this is one of those gales in November, as, as Gordon Lightfoot would say in the Great Lakes. This is one of those events for here in the lower Texas coast. 
So you might be asking, well, when was the last time it was like this here in the Valley? And we did a little comparison with the 83 and 89 events. And sure enough, it's not too different, but we do think it will not be quite uh, as cold as 89 and nowhere near as cold as 83, which if you remember was a widespread killing freeze event. We're talking hundreds of millions of dollars in both citrus damage, but also ornamental palm tree damage in addition to others. We even had ice in the Laguna Madre. That's how cold that event was. Our current forecast, as you can see, in Brownsville, for example, um, high temperatures um, in the upper 30s, very similar here to 83 for a couple of days, but again, not 30 there, and then a lows in the upper 20s and then lower 30s. So the, the quick rise out of it on Christmas Day in 89, uh, this may be a, a, a year that's an analog closer than 83 because there was one situation here in Brownsville, I think we were 30 hours or more without going above freezing. That is not the forecast in this case, but it is the coldest period of Christmas time that we've had since the 1980s. So those of you long timers will remember that event. So let's finalize here with key recommendations. We already talked about impacts. Now we're going to go to recommendations. People, plants, pets, pipes, the four Ps should have completed winter weather preparedness before sunset Thursday. There's still a little wiggle room on the timing of this front. It could theoretically come as early as 5 or 6 p.m. and that's sunset. So really get it all done before sunset, before things really crank up uh, soon after and especially overnight. Uh, also check your vehicles for battery and other cold critical items. If you have an old battery in your vehicle, change it out by Thursday because batteries really struggle if you don't have enough cold cranking amps. If you have a low number of cold cranking amps, I guarantee your battery, if it's outside, will not start on Friday or Saturday. So if you need your car, your truck, um, you want to get that done now. Then crop growers and ranchers should also have protective actions lined up and completed for hard freezes. As I mentioned before, low effective temperatures known as wet bulb uh, before sunset Thursday. And We've mentioned this, we've been in touch with the sea turtle folks as well, uh, people that work in the NOAA side. Uh, the volunteers who may be doing rescue should be ready to act as soon as winds and waves recede. That could start as early as Christmas Eve afternoon, that's Saturday afternoon, more likely on Christmas Day. Again, this is going to be a huge mass event. So if you're on South Padre listening and you need the convention center, please open it up. Those sea turtles are going to need some help next week when the rescues are done. We are expecting the temperatures to fall into the 40s in both the bay and the surf. And it could go as low as the lower 40s, even upper 30s potentially in the bay and lower to mid 40s right near shore of the Gulf uh, by the time we get to Saturday. And then finally, scattered to locally, numerous power outages are likely. So residents should anticipate the need and ready their homes on now until Thursday to be set for this event coming in over the um, pre-Christmas time period. Safe space heater safety tips, we do have this uh, available, will be on the slide deck that we've already sent you. And then here's a nice overview. This is on the front page of our website, weather.gov forward slash RGV. Uh, you can look at the first tab and see the kind of overall protection ideal for everything we need to do for this event. And uh, we added these little Christmas symbols to let people know that this is a Christmas time event. So while it's great to feel cold for Christmas, the valley is just not used to this kind of weather. We want to be safe while we're enjoying our holiday festivities. And there's a few more here that I'll zip on through that we also have on the slide deck. And so as far as the next briefing go, well, right now we'll be continuing the email updates through Christmas Day, um, at least Christmas Eve, and then a possible webinar or two or three, depending on your interest. If you want another one at same time tomorrow, same time on uh, the 23rd, uh, we can do that for you. We probably wouldn't need one on Saturday as the event will be well underway by then. But if you want to do one the 21st, 22nd, and maybe the 23rd, please let me know. Um, I am available to do that for you all. And with that, I'm going to stop the recording.